Let's talk about the service. The service is basically crud with a web server. 99% of services are create, reads, updates, deletes with some form of web service. Ruby, Python, Java, .NET, whatever. Right? That's what a service is. It is the encapsulation of the business logic to a remote and or local service. I need to get a user. I'm logged in with the session. Give me a user. Okay, I got a user. Or I didn't get a user. It could also be local services or local JSON. Maybe you're reading some local serialized data. Uh, maybe you're using um, a socket service that you're saving locally to a file for offline storage later and actually reading that local JSON file service. So that's another way you can be done as well. Parsing data to deep to VOs. Most services will get data from a backend in some type of domain object that you know about, right? That domain object or value object is going to be parsed in that service. So that service says get a user, it'll give you back a user. A user could be obviously JSON, but the language or the nomenclature that we speak about is in domain objects or value objects, a user object, a parental controls object, a high scores object, a user from Corona Cloud, right? Whatever that is, the service is responsible for giving that to you. You don't care about parsing XML and data. Like all you know is this service, I ask for a user, I get a user back, right? Internally, it gives XML into a factory and it gets back or JSON or whatever, okay? So the service will usually be the one responsible for parsing that data to the VO. It will dispatch a success or failure, period. Now, some services will do retry. Some services will say not available at this time. Some services have like a, a long list of error codes that come back even in a success response. Uh, some will handle HTTP codes, 500, yada, yada, yada. The point is most services, either they worked or they didn't. When they didn't work, it always depends on your network library. Does your network library support reading web, um, web, web response codes? Are you reading a custom error from your API that comes back in success response? So you dispatch an error, right? That API is I make a call and I get it worked or didn't. That's really what we're looking for here, okay? That's no, usually what a good service can do for you. Services do not listen to framework events. They have a method that somebody calls. Now, if you're leveraging services on top of robot legs, they can participate by dispatching their success or failure via runtime, okay? Backbone service can, can kind of work the same way, but a lot of times Backbone will take the proxy route where you'll put a Ajax call inside of your Backbone model. Um, I, I think some of the Java front controllers used to work the same way with callbacks. So that's one way they, they can actually you know participate, but they don't listen. They actually say, hey, we're done. It's very similar to a model. They don't listen. They are great unit test candidates. Um, again, I'll get to this later, but the number one bug for most programming is data outside of your domain, right? And you, this is especially true in dynamically typed languages. If you're getting data from some other source that's not your own and not created, it's injected to the system, services are the great, you know, the greatest low hanging fruit to actually add unit tests. Not integration tests, just I, you know, call method and I get this back, right? What does it do when the service fails? Like these are very important things to know. So service practices, there's basically two practices. They're both right, it's fine, it doesn't matter. There's different use cases for each. I'm just letting you know that there's two different ways of doing it, okay, that are common. Most um, some services that are written do not store data. So you say get user service or get latest high scores. The service will get the high scores, but it won't store any data. There's no externally available data. There's obviously private variables you could access, right? And then Lua doesn't have private, but you can hide it via closures, blah, 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 blah. The point is it doesn't store data. The data that you get is dispatched at the time of the event. So it's assumed that you're ready for the success or failure event. And if you are ready for the success event, you're gonna get the value object that you need in that event, okay? It's gonna have data in it. If you're not ready, too bad, it's gone, you're gonna have to call again. And hope that they have some kind of internal caching mechanism. The way I like is the service does store data. It stores the last piece of data that I got. And it's expected that you're gonna have a reference to that service and go to that service to get the data you need. And if you dispatch event, you're just saying, look, it either worked or succeeded. I'll go to the service for you know, some kind of public API. Now, in strongly typed languages, this works great. You have API discovery, you have some form of convention, like a get user would expose a user object, a get high score would expose a high score object. In Lua, it's like, you have to open a class and like, what does this expose again? What is it there? So these kind of things don't really 
have any meaning other than you know just an opinion again with any good programming whatever you pick you should be consistent what you pick right especially for loose languages okay service gotchas these are the things that kill every single project that I've ever been on regardless of language regardless of technology foreign data foreign data data that you did not create somebody creates especially in Lewis case a table that or JavaScript an object or JSON or whatever that you didn't create it's gonna be in a format that you don't expect right so that data is gonna get in there and poison the system factories aka things that parse data from the server XML JSON text whatever are the number one source of whack bugs right when I say whack bugs I mean bugs that are like what what's going on here manual timeouts some services uh, it depends on the, the runtime you're using but some services are really bad about timing out some will time out way too long it will take minutes now that's cool in the fact that it keeps the HTTP connection open and actually waits for data horrible user experience the users want to know what the heck is going on my device is broken most users are not very patient me included so you should have a manual timeout and seem like look if I didn't have it in 30 seconds something whacks with the server let the user know I'm going to retry again, maybe dispatch a progress event in addition to a success or failure, right? Whatever that is. Um, explode early. If you've got some parsing issues that you don't understand or the data isn't just right, explode early. Just throw an error so during development you'll see these problems before they happen. It's not unit test. It's more of I want to make sure that my parsing algorithm is very fragile, right? So you could wrap it with a P call, which is kind of like a Lua's version of try catch. And you can make sure that it's a protected call, so it's not going to explode, but you will get a parsing failure and you will know why you got a parsing failure. I couldn't find this particular node. Oh, it's now uppercase magically. Like that kind of stuff, you want to know early in development. So be really liberal with your throws there, but make sure you wrap that particular factory call on a P call so you don't actually explode for the user to actually, or the consumer of that API to deal with, someone on your team. Okay?